In this video, we are going to learn how you can create quizzes using Tutor LMS3. So let's get started. So for this tutorial, we will be using the pro version of Tutor LMS because it gives us access to all the quiz types. In the free version, you get access to the four quiz types of Tutor LMS, but with the Tutor LMS Pro, you get access to all the quiz types. So first, let's take a look at the pricing page of Tutor LMS Pro. So we're here in the pricing page of Tutor LMS and you can see that they have two types of plans, annual and lifetime. The annual plan starts from $199 with the individual plan and goes up to $799 with the agency plan. Getting any one of these plans will give you all the pro add-ons and all the quiz categories. Tutor LMS also has the lifetime plans and these are a bit expensive, but since these are one-time payment, you can understand why. The lifetime individual plan is $499, the business plan is $999, and the agency plan is $1999. These are all one-time payment. So we'll provide the Tutor LMS link in the video description. You can click on that link and get the plan which is best suited for you. So we already have Tutor LMS Pro installed in our WordPress site, so we're going to log into our Tutor LMS Power WordPress website. All right, so this is our Tutor LMS Powered website. And if we take a look at the courses, so we created this course in our previous tutorial, which was on how to create a course using the new Tutor LMS 3. So if you guys missed this tutorial, we'll provide the link in the video description so you can watch it. Okay, so we are going to edit this course and add our quiz over here. So for the second lesson, we are going to add our quiz. We're simply going to click on this plus quiz button and this will create the quiz. So we have to add a title to our quiz and a summary. So let's go ahead and add it. Now to add a question, we can simply click on this plus button over here. And from here, you can choose the quiz type or quiz category that you want to add. So we have eight of these quiz categories. In the free version, you'll have access to the true or false, multiple choice, open-ended and fill in the blanks. But with Tutor Elements Pro, you get access to a short answer matching, image matching, and ordering. So these are advanced quiz types. So we're going to go through each type and see how these work. So let's start with true or false. So this is the true or false question. Here you can see the interface has already changed. We have to add a question over here. We can add a description to our question. So this will explain to our students what this question is all about. And this is also optional. You can leave it empty if you want. And finally, you have to choose if your answer is true or false, all right? And you also have the option to add the answer explanation. So let's go ahead and add the question. All right, so this is our question. Once you have written it, you can simply click on this check mark button and the question will be added. Now we can add a description, but it's really not necessary. So we're not going to do it. And the question is SCORM stands for shareable content object reference model. So this is true. We are going to leave it true. All right, if you wanted this to be false, you can just select false. And you can also drag and drop these options if you want. After that, you can actually make this question required or not. So if you want students to answer this question, you can make this answer required. Otherwise, students will be able to skip this question. Okay, you can also randomize the choice. So what will happen in case of true or false is that first true will appear and second false. This order might change if you enable this. Then you can decide how many points students will earn if they answer this question correctly from here. You can award two points, 20 points, it's up to you, all right? But we're going to leave it only one and we also want to display the points. Okay, so that is the true or false question type. Now let's add another question to our quiz. Now let's go with the multiple choice. Now you can see the interface has changed again and the question has been added over here. All right, so now let's add the question. All right, now we're going to click on this button. And this is our question, which of the following is not a feature commonly found in an LMS? So this is a multiple choice question and this question can have multiple correct answers. If there are multiple correct answers, you have to enable this. If it has only one correct answer, you have to disable this, all right? So we're going to go on ahead and click on this add option over here and add our option. And you also can see you have the option to add an image if you want. So if you click over here, you will have the option to upload your image or select the image from your media library. So we don't actually want to add any image for this option. So we're simply going to click on OK. And that's our option. Using this same method, we are going to add three more options. All right, so these are our options. So after you add your option, you also have to select which is the correct answer. So C is the correct answer, we're going to select it. All right, and now we want to make this answer required and we also want to display the point. 
Now let's add the next question, which is the open-ended essay. So I'm going to select it. So the open-ended essay question is basically, you can write your question over here, then you can describe your question. And over here, you can see it says no options are necessary for this question type. So what will happen is students will have to write their answers within a limited characters. So we will take a look at how these looks like in the front end from students perspective after we create this quiz. So here we have written the question and we also have provided a question description. So there is no fixed number of points that you have to write. So what will happen is when students read this question, they will have a chance to write their answers in the text box. And after students submit this question, the LMS actually cannot decide if this answer is correct or not. The teacher has to look at the answer in the back end and decide if the answer is correct or not. All right, now let's add the fill in the blanks question type. Now you already know how this works. You'll write a statement or a sentence and in that sentence, you'll have to add a blank or a dash and students will have to fill that blank or gap with the correct word or with the correct answer. So for this, we are first going to add our question over here. All right, so in the question, we have written fill in the blank with the correct answer. And then this is our question section. Here we added our question. One of the key benefits of using an LMS is the ability to generate detailed dash and analytics on learners progress. So the dash that we have placed here when the students see this in the front end, what will happen is they will see a blank over here and they will have to fill it up with the right answer. So what will be the right answer? We are going to write over here. Reports. All right. Now you can also add multiple dashes or multiple blanks. For example, if you want this to be a blank, you can instead of analytics write dash over here. All right. So in this case, we have two dashes, but only one answer. Let's actually see what it looks like if we have only one dash. So I'm going to click on OK. You can see the question looks like this. So the place where we added the dash, it looks like this. Now let's see what happens if we add two dashes. All right, now we have to add in another answer. All right, now let's click on OK. And now you can see there are two dashes and two answers. So students will have to write two of these answers. But I want to make this question simpler, so I'm going to add only one dash instead of two. And you can already see that it detected an error over here because we have only one dash and two answers. So we're going to remove this answer and click on OK. Great. So that was the fill in the blanks question type. Now let's click on plus button and add in the other question type, which is the short answer. So here students will have to add a short answer to your question. So let's go ahead and add in our question. For this question, we also added an answer explanation so we can see how this looks like in the front end. And after that, we're going to make this answer required and display points. And for the filling the blanks, we didn't enable this. So let's go ahead and do it. Great. So we have the short answer. So in this question type, what will happen is you will have a question over here and students will have the chance to answer the question over here. We will see how this looks like in the front end later on. Now let's go ahead and click on the plus button and add the matching question type. So this is a fun question type. Here you can add in a question. The question can be like match the following pairs or match the following parts or groups. All right. And when you click on option, you will have the option to add in the question and the answer. So let's go ahead and see how this looks like. We have added the question and it's a general question. Match the following options with its correct pair. We are going to click on this add option button. And now we're going to add a question and then we're going to add a matched option to that. So let's see how this looks like. So this is a simple question. We added Apple and Apple developed iPhone. So we wrote over here iPhone. Students can match this. So after this, we're going to click on OK. And that's our pair. Now, in the same way, we're going to add two more options. In the front end, these all will be scrambled and students will have to match them with the matching pair. All right. So we're going to make this answer required display points. So from here, we're going to click on the plus button and add the image answering. Now, image answering is a bit different from match but the mechanics is the same. What will happen is you will add a question first, then here in the answer type, you will upload an image and students will have to write their answers in an input box like this. So let's go ahead and add a question and see how this looks like. All right, so we added our question and the question was, write the name of the colors that you see in the image. So this is a red color and students will have to write red. So this is the correct answer to this question. So to add the options, we can simply click on the option. We click on upload image and you can either upload the image from here or you can select from media library. So we already uploaded the images so we can select from here. And now we can add 
in the answer. So we are using small caps when writing the answer, okay? And that's the image answer, all right? Now let's add the other question type. So this is the last question type, which is the ordering. So let's click on it. And in here, you'll have a question over here and you'll have several answers and students will have to rearrange these options in the correct order. So let's actually add a question here so we can better understand this. All right, so the question is rearrange the following user roles in WordPress with the higher privileges being on the top. So these are the user roles in WordPress and Students will have to rearrange these in the correct order and the user role with the highest privileges will be on the top. So admin, editor, author and contributor. So you can also drag and drop these to rearrange them in the correct order. But the order which you set it in will be the answer. So we're going to make this answer required and display points. So now our question is created. We can click on the next button to go to settings and look at the settings over here. We can set a time limit for a question. So students will have this amount of time in order to answer this question. But since this is a tutorial, we are going to leave it to zero. So zero means there will be no time limit. So students will have unlimited time to answer the question. You can hide quiz time if you want. Finally, in the feedback mood, what will happen? You can try the default. In the default mood, the answers will be shown after finishing the quiz. In the reveal mood, it will show answers after attempting the question. And in the retry mood, allows student to retake the quiz after the first attempt. So we're going to select the reveal mood. The passing grade is 80%. You can choose the passing grade. It's up to you. In the max question allowed to answer, you can specify what's the maximum number of questions students are allowed to answer. If we hover a mouse over here, we can read, set the number of quiz questions randomly from your question pool. If the set number exceeds available questions, all questions will be included, all right? In the advanced settings, the first option that we see is the quiz auto start. If you enable this, feature, what will happen is the quiz will start automatically and students don't have to click on the start quiz button to start the quiz. In the question layout, you can choose single question, question pagination, question below each other. So these are already self-explanatory. You can already understand. If you choose the single question, one by one question will be shown. If you choose the question pagination, the questions will appear in a pagination. And if you choose question below each other, all the questions will be placed sequentially. All right. You can also uh, choose the question order. You can make it random, sorting, ascending, descending. It's up to you. And you can also hide the question numbers if you want and set character limits for short answers. So for the short answers, students will have to answer within 200 character limit. And for the long answer, students will have 500 character limit. So you can also specify this in the details. So currently 200 is selected. You can add any number of characters. But we're going to keep it default. To make this a bit easier on the students, we are going to also add this in the details. So we're going to go to question details. And this is the short answer. Here we're going to write answer the question within 200 characters. OK, so this will be a bit easier for students. And same goes for the open ended question. All right. Answer within 500 characters. So we're going to click on OK and click on next and finally click on save. So now we're going to also go to basics and make this course public so we can directly take this course. Now let's update and let's click on preview. So this is our course and this is our quiz. We're going to click on it and let's start our quiz. So the first question that we get is the image answering. So here we have the colors and we have an input box to write our answer. So let's go ahead and write in our answer. This is red color. This is green and this is blue. Now we're going to click on submit and next. Now we have the fill in the blanks question. We can write our answer over here. You can see the blank appears over here. So the correct answer is reports. Now we're going to click on submit and next. And here it says, which of the following is not a feature commonly found in an LMS? So this is our multiple choice question. This is our correct answer. We're going to click on submit and next. The next question is the ordering question type. And it says, rearrange the following user roles in WordPress with the highest privileges being on the top. So the admin has the highest privilege. So it's already on the top. Editor will be second. Author will be third and contributor will be at last. So this is our correct answer. Now we're going to click on submit and next. Now this is the matching question type. Here we have our questions, Apple, PHP, WordPress. And these are the answers that we can drag and drop into the correct box. So it will make up the correct pair. 
So for Apple, this is the correct answer, iPhone. For PHP, this is the correct answer. It's a programming language. And for WordPress, we're going to drag and drop the CMS as this is the correct answer. Now we're going to click on Submit and Next. Now this is the true or false question. SCORM stands for Shareable Content Object Reference Model. It's true. Now we're going to click on Submit and Next. Now this is the short answering question type. Here we can see the question, we can see the marks. We have to answer the question within 200 characters. So this is the question details that we added. We can also see the characters remaining. So we have to answer within 200 characters. Okay, so this is our answer. Now we're going to click on Submit and Next. Now this is the essay or open-ended question type. Here we can see the question detail and we can also see the characters remaining. So this is our answer. After we write in our answer, we can click on Submit Quiz and that completes our quiz. Now we can see this is the quiz summary. Here we can see we have attempted eight questions. So there was no quiz time limit. The total marks is eight, but we have received five. So out of eight, we have gotten five and there are three more marks or numbers or points that we need to get and the passing marks is 6.40. Here we can see the date and time when we attempted the quiz. Here's the number of questions. Total marks is eight, correct answer is five, and we have earned marks five. So the other three question types, these need to be manually checked and marked by the instructor. So we're going to click on this details button. So this is where we can see all the questions that we have attempted. Now we can see that the image answering the short answer and open-ended question types, these have pending over here. That means it requires the manual marking of the instructor. If you are the instructor, we can go back to the dashboard, take a look at the quiz attempts. And from here, we can click on review. And this is where the instructor can see the students attempted questions. So from here, we can see these are correct and these are pending. So. For the image answering, we can see the question is over here, and this is the given answer, and this is the correct answer that we set when we were creating the question. So if we think that this is the correct answer, we can click on this check mark button, and it will be set to correct. And as soon as you mark it correct, you can see the five changes to six. Now students have answered six questions correctly, and they have also earned the marks for the question. Now let's scroll down. And here is the short answering question type. We can click on this check mark button if it's correct. And here a small arrow appears. So let's see what happens if we click over here. We can see the answer explanation. So this is the answer explanation that we added when we were creating the question. And finally, this is the open ended question type. Here we can read the answer submitted by the student. And finally, we can click on the check mark button to mark it as correct. And all right, so all the questions have been marked. Now we can see the correct answer. It turns to eight. So this student has earned 100% marks. Now, if we want, we can also add an instructor feedback in here, and then we can update it. So that is how you can create quizzes in Tutor LMS Pro. We hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more helpful videos on WordPress. So thank you for watching. See you next time.